There, there we you go. go. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Let me get back to the um, PowerPoint. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting little panel there of information. Don't remember seeing that before. Yeah, that that was interesting. Whatever it was. Yeah. That you can. I don't have. I I didn't put any kind of. It's not like presenter's notes. I don't think. I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. So I guess uh, you know the goal of tonight. But two two goals from the Scouts BSA and the things uh, is to talk about a little bit about people's ideas of what their troops favorite camping places are so we can share that amongst the different units um, and also a little bit about the nature requirements for second and first class um, and then joe is going to initiate this is the premier night of a section section on cub scout topics which joe is going to handle um, so let's get to the next slide steve Is that is this where you want favorite camping? No, places? slide three, slide three. Where from here on, we're just going to be moving moving <laughs> forward. I think pretty quickly. What slide should we be on? This is about favorite camping. Should be the one right after this. I hope, unless I completely scramble this. Are you seeing the screen? Yep, I'm seeing uh, the one about the the uh, district announcements. Oh, uh, I don't know what's going on. Hold on. <laughs> that's the one that's on. That should be up next. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. You you skip one. Go go back one please. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is basically you know, group participation. Just let's, let's see. Um, one question I have for everybody, because I know this, this is a, has always been an issue in our troop is, um, do you have like, does your troop have a favorite camp that they like to go to, even though you just did the same thing last November. We're going to do it again this November. Joe, is there something like that in your unit? I don't have a unit. Well, <laughs> all right, make up a unit. Come on. <laughs> then, no, this fictional unit doesn't do that. Six, your, six or three. Your fictional unit, I'm sure, goes to a new place every month, never goes to the same place twice. Uh, it's actually, they've been around for 115 years now, so they're running out of camps, but yeah, every month. Um, but no, to speak to Malden, uh, where I, uh, you know, uh, unit commission, uh, they big fans of Carpenter, Camp Carpenter up in Manchester. It's like yeah. right off the highway, but still uh, deep in the woods. Um, and they uh, get along with the leadership there. So definitely, um, they, they really like it. It's just a bit about outside town. What's it like 45 minutes outside of Malden to get there? So mm -hmm. they really mm -hmm. like that. It's a lovely little camp. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is so convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, what about you guys? So every November when we do the Cub Scout turkey roast, we go to Camp Grenau down on the Cape. So really? And then um, the, I'd say it's if we... We seldom, well, half the time we're successful. We try to do a bike trip also down on the Cape and stay at Camp Nickerson. But trying mm -hmm. to get a reservation there is always really tough. But then I'd say is that honestly, we do like to go out to TL store um, for like we did a wilderness survival weekend a couple, a uh, few weeks ago when it was coming down cats and dogs. Um, so I'd say that. And then it, then it does get scattered around. We try to do some backpacking up in the whites and stay at like a, with one of the AMC huts or, you know, one of the Adirondacks up there. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you, you tend to kind of move around a lot. We do. I mean, we do, we do go down to Camp Sayre, um, probably once, probably once a year or so, just again, because it's, it's proximal and it's, and it's, you know, well-equipped and it's, you can get enough and you can do some hikes out in the Blue Hills too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what, one of the ones that, that our, our November trip was always to go to Camp Squanto, you know, sort of down the Cape. And then you had the, uh, the uh, Miles Standish Forest for hiking purposes. Uh, the only dicey thing about the whole thing, it was also uh, hunting season. So so wearing orange yeah. jacket. That's some wear, wear orange and be loud. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which of the troopers nope. count pretty easy to do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Before COVID, though, we did try to do a, a trip out to the uh, Harbor Islands. Like we'd mm -hmm. get the canoes from camp and, um, you know, canoe over to Bumpkin Island. Uh, but it's gotten really tight. Uh, the park service, whatever, hasn't really opened up the islands that much in the last the last yeah. two years or so. So, yeah, when, when you do that, you have to br even bring in your own water, right? Or well, that's the thing on Bumpkin; they actually do have running water there. Okay, is it one of them? Maybe Grape Island. One of them, I think. You, you yeah. Have to bring water. Yeah, Grape is a little bit. Honestly, we have a lot of we have a lot of scouts that are a bit younger, and that may be a little bit much. I think. It's uh -huh. Of the right islands for them to, to paddle out to. Yeah. So um, that, that's a resource. You know, I, I really the only one did that once. Uh, we did a Harbor Island once, but that you're right. That's a resource which, yeah. if it were available, yeah. spectacular. Yeah. Um, May I ask a question? Sure, John. Don't run you up, but um, I was I was aware that so, at least one troop that I used to belong to, uh, is no longer, used to go out to one of the Harbor Islands. I can't remember which one anymore. Um, and they, I was wondering how, or Ben, how how does your troop get its members out there? So for Bumpkin Island, it's basically a few hundred yards off of like Hull Beach. So if we get the canoes, then we can actually even if we have a lot of, if, even if we have almost the entire troop that goes out there, we can ferry back and forth um, with two or three, you know, with like three people in the canoe. Um, we have gone out to like Paddock's Island, and then we've had to take a ferry for that one. Okay. The, the uh, yeah, publicly available ferry. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. As I recall, uh, Troop 421 used to have several adult members who were also members of a boat club. And so they had some halfway decent sized boats that they could haul. And it was a very small troop. Um, so they could haul everybody out in, in no more than two boats. And, and then the boat will go back home for the weekend. And uh, they were left there on, the, on, I think, I think they did Pedox Island too. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah. Water, water was an issue. You're surrounded by it, but you don't dare drink it. Uh, right. Like the Charles River used to be. So you didn't dare swim in it. Yeah. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's nice that there is public transportation to get between the islands, not just getting to one or two. Yeah, it's a that's yeah. rather it's a nice. Yeah, yeah. Anybody go to Camp Nihan anymore? Now that uh, DCR is taking it over. Um, Back, you know, five ten years ago, or I guess ten fifteen years ago, when I was a cub master, we went to Nihan. <laughs> three times uh, a, a year, you know, uh, with yeah. the Cubs, because it's from Revere up to, I don't even, what is it in, Lynn, is it in Saugus? In Saugus, Saugus. North Saugus. Yeah. It's a nice little jaunt. It's easy to convince parents to drive uh, their own kids. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, it got, it got fairly hard to get reservations, um, which, was, which was a bit of a problem. I don't know if that, that had ever loosened up. When they first trans changed, um, I, I still think you got to go through the Commonwealth's, you know, yeah. um, registration like system. Right in the state park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. USA or whatever. Yeah. State state parks. People use state parks. Yeah. In fact, that's where we're headed in two weeks. We're headed down to um, Shawnee Crow. 
which is right there, right at basically at the Cape Cod Canal. Okay. <clears throat> How do you manage the um, <clears throat> site capacity? You have to rent the number of yeah. sites, but <clears throat> do you ever have challenges with getting them, you know, uh, in proximity to each other? Uh, we got fairly lucky this time. Um, but, you know, sometimes if you, if, when we've reached out to the to the park ranger in the park, we can reach out there and see if they can scoot people around, too. And it's been we've had usually reasonable luck with that, too, because I think as everyone's probably found with uh, whether it's with your family or troop, is that a lot of the state parks, people book sites and then never show up. Mm. So, well, I mean. I Meaning I, other people. So when you get there, it, even though it's yeah. sort of supposedly booked to capacity, it, it's it's not. When when I was scoutmaster, I think it was maybe around 2017, I took the scouts up to Acadia in mm. April. And it was before their season opened. Mm. So it was um, no reservations, first come, first serve. And the group site were not available. Only the individual sites, you know, that were limited to accommodate. I can't remember if it was six or eight, but the group sites were not open at that time because it was off season and right. there was no reservations you could make. And um, we got very lucky because we needed three. Mm hmm. Sites and we grabbed the last three that were there, and there were other um, civilians. There were civilians that were driving up and down the same uh, roads, looking at yeah. sites as we were. And somehow we got the last three that were open, even though we weren't the first ones to drive by. Other people just ignored those sites for some reason. And we uh, we deployed pretty rapidly and grabbed those three. And and after that experience, you know, I said to myself, what would we have done if we weren't able to get any campsites uh, because the place was full? You know, would I have camped in the group camping area and asked for forgiveness when the ranger came around? Uh, or Because the, there was nowhere else legally to go. Uh, I don't know that there were any private um camps on the island that would have accommodated us so yeah i, I just never like again that. at that point wow you're a risk taker steve <laughs> yeah had right i right on the edge of that envelope buddy wouldn't have done it you know <laughs> uh but uh the problem i have with um state parks is the um that you're mixed in with the general public and uh and the sites are very close to each other and scouts can be rather rambunctious and you often have families with young children who want to go to sleep and you know it can just be an awkward situation to manage yeah you know the the opposite can happen too i have a friend who spends much of the summer camping on the cape in state parks and she says she's driven crazy by her neighbors, by the civilian neighbors. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> it can go either way. Yeah, there's also the, the yahoos that come into the camp and cause trouble and the rangers have to kick them out at, you know, two o'clock in the morning because they won't. That was them. one time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Has anybody gone up, up to like Camp Hines in Maine? I've heard very good things about that from my neighbors in Maine, uh, both the Wells Troop and uh, Mike O'Neill's Troop in New York. Um, both have, have anybody used that? I've never been to the place. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Trying to talk us into it. <laughs> we haven't tried it yet. Only yeah. time I was there was for Conclave. Okay, it's in it's in Raymond, Maine. It's quite it's quite a schlep up, I think. Right, Joe? I mean, it's there were closer places in Maine, I'll say. <laughs> okay. What kind of camp is it? I, it's just your very traditional summer camp. It's TL store or Wataka, but all the stuff's moved around. Uh-huh. 
-hmm. and you know i was there for um for conclave so it's very much a big away event with a bunch of training and camp white games and stuff mm -hmm. so i didn't see much of it i was i believe i was on staff of that one and i was teaching all day um uh, but you know big dining hall looks nice uh mm -hmm. it, it seems like there were probably cabins to rent uh just your regular resident camp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the other one the other which would be a wonderful trip would be Nantucket Camp Raymond. Um, anybody on that one? Yeah. Well, going back to Maine, an, another variation is, uh, that I've heard of is that um, the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kennebunk or Kennebunkport yeah. um, will we'll run a, uh, or I know they have at least once run a a railroading merit badge uh, class, uh, shall we say, course um, for a troop, a single troop, but this was, and they let the scouts camp overnight on their grounds somewhere, not in the sheds where the equipment is stored, but um, camp out in an open there. I know there's an open field near their big parking lot at the front of the building or front of the site. So if somebody wanted to do that, uh, uh, one of the points on the screen right now, it does your troop have advancement focused trips. So yeah. working on a single merit badge, uh, I would hope that some other location could be converted or expanded into a, a addressing more than one uh, merit badge in the same trip. Yeah. Yeah, also that is a nice place to stay. As a matter of fact, I did go to the problem museum with my, my two grandsons and their fathers. And the day we were there, there was a scout troop there too and their thing. So yes, they must do that fairly regularly. Um, and there was, was a main troop. They were not, you know, not long distance travelers. So they were just there for the day, I guess. Um, the other thing that's neat is in their sheds, they have the um, the old uh, trolleys from the T, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the ones from the 1940s that I remember riding on the E-line when I was in graduate school. Yeah, they have several very interesting pieces there, uh, yeah. and they do run them once in a while. So yes, yeah, but they, they, it's a fairly old one that they take you on their little loop ride, I think. Yeah, the open ones. No, this this, this actually had windows and stuff. The one that we were on, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Documents yeah. Good. Oh. the other thing that was uh, for years there was a uh, horse. Horsemanship merit badge program run by a farm uh, that a troop could go to for a weekend camping and the same same idea, John. Um, and I could probably find the address of that place. I think it was in Bolton or something like that. Uh, if anybody was interested, hmm. there's a, a riding program in Bolton. In, in the the town, the town it was a, a farm who had a would run a weekend. Horsemanship Merit Badge program for a troop. Oh, wow. I have been riding since I was a young teenager. Yeah. So are you a counselor for it? Huh? Are you a Merit Badge counselor for it? I've been a Merit Badge counselor for pretty much everything. but uh, And I used to ride, but then when my father died. We didn't have money for... Uh, riding anymore because yeah. riding is a very expensive thing it, it's not just owning the horses or the irish ponies we used to ride but the the food and someone mm -hmm. to yeah. keep them up yeah food vets and everything else right horseshoes oh yeah them. the vets huh? we, we you didn't just pay you had to pay it you had to put a red bed on retainer Re really Oh yeah, it was like uh, ins it's like human insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 there are girls who who are uh, well, they're dangerous dates because they spend all their money on their horses, and then they, you have to pay for everything else. Mm -hmm. My sister, <laughs> my sister was like that. Right, right out of high school, my sisters bought a horse and had to keep it stable and everything. And she just poured her money into that. And then she got married and the horse was gone. So, <laughs> Well, you know, 
they're expensive. Yeah. John, was, was all this in Massachusetts or, or did you come from another part of the country? No, no, I grew up in Concord, Massachusetts, and we used to go to Ireland in this in the uh, summer, but we used to uh, go to the jump show, not the races. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, we did jumping and it's kind of that kind of horsemanship. Yeah. And I never draw, I never rode Arabian horses because I was too little. So we only rode uh, Irish ponies, which are bigger than American ponies, you know, like you give spoiled mm -hmm. kids. But they're smaller than Arabians, and uh, well, you know, you got to treat them with love, or you know, they feel left out. They're like dogs; they're very faithful. Really, that's neat. That, that yeah. Is, do people race them in, in in this country, or is it? Uh... Oh yeah, we have. I, I but I've never been to, to a, a horse racing thing. I haven't even been to the one in New York. Uh huh. In Saratoga. Saratoga, yeah. Yeah, I know that you know in Maine there's an there's a, a very extensive. Um, what, Kathy, what town is that in? Bob goes. I, I one of the know. one of the towns in Maine has a, an equestrian center, um, and they have periodic you know shows. Um, I think they do jumping and you know dressage type things um, every well, every. Because because the guy the contractor the guy who's trying to fix my bathroom and someday he will finish it is a judge in these things. Uh, well, I, I never did dressage. I wasn't sophisticated enough. I, there's also uh, there are also places up in Vermont where you can rent a horse for thirty bucks an hour and you know go on a trail and and the horses are pretty tame. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But it, it, I think a, a lot of kids would get a real kick out of. Uh, you know, mounting a horse, they'd be frightened, but some of them might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the uh, for, for a couple of years, they, they actually ran that the uh, horsemanship badge during the weeks at store the summer camp. Oh, did they? When was yeah. this? Past, uh, well, uh, pretty much the three, four years until like 2011 started. on, I'd say. Yeah, something like it was a, it was a while, right, Joe? That's yeah. a great idea, yeah. whoever thought of it. Yeah, they did that, and I think they, they had a vet who was involved, and so she did the uh, animal medicine part of it, too. Oh. So, really nice program. Nice program. A couple of our kids got the badge. Um, I think one of them got kicked by a horse. Yeah, well, I, if, if someone says I have a, see, I'm a half English, if I, if I got a knighthood, I always say uh, I'm a KBM. I was kicked by a mule. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh but um you know there i think there's a veterinary merit badge too isn't there veterinary medicine yeah veterinary yeah. Medicine. yeah and 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 a, and a lot of the kids from the cities to the extent we can get them to participate might get a kick out of riding a horse and not yes. being afraid of it Yes, the, the, the ones in our troop are from Chelsea. And, you know, for them, uh, one of the complaints about sleeping <clears throat> sleeping at, at camp was that it was too quiet. So, yeah, city kids do enjoy it. Well, yeah, the, the main thing that city kids get afraid of is all the sounds in the night. They think a bear is going to come out and eat them. But, you know, just like a, a kid from Concord, where I grew up, would be terrified of the city. These kids were terrified of, of the uh, woods. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. It's either, that's it's what either. you do. You put them in cabins so they don't have to worry about being intense. Well, I don't know. It's, it's either a bear or it's John Tumblin snoring. Those are the two options. <laughs> well, John Tumblin's a bear, so. Yeah, well. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can remember when we violated the youth protection laws by putting all me and uh, two other adult snorers in the tent because they said a pox on all three of their houses if they're going to snore. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you get the, the city kids to come in, put them in a, in a large cabin where they feel safe and, and uh, get them into horses and, and they'll wow their neighborhoods when they come home and say that they rode a horse. Yeah. And of course, 
John Bull knows my favorite thing, which is Scoutcraft. They could show people how they built an Ewok village, you know, out of mm -hmm. Star Wars. Or a bridge or, or a trembuchet. Mm -hmm. uh, catapult uh, water balloons at uh, people on a hot summer day. Yeah, catapults, catapults are fun. Yeah, why is John Joseph Curran uh, nodding his head? Head at the idea of water balloons hurled hurled into the, because uh, scouts don't shoot or throw things at people. Oh, I'm sure they don't. They're all nice boys, truly. They never <laughs> do anything to torment their adult leaders. And if you let your kids do it, then you as an adult leader are liable for any injuries that happen in the scouts' art because it's not an approved activity. Oh well. <laughs> um, you can you can toss your water you can toss your water balloons into the woods. Um, oh, it's no fun shooting a water balloon at an inanimate object. <laughs> uh, have have we are there any other camps that people love to go to? That you know the next slide has a bunch of names I kind of pulled out of a hat, but come on, any other any of the other ones that uh, people have thought about, gone to, and enjoyed. I don't know. I, I the most beautiful one was Camp Sachem, but we don't own it anymore. No, no, that's true. Is how how much is Parker still being used, or is that being rented out to someone else? Steve, my understanding this you might be able to answer better than I, Steve. Is it true you off season you can get spaces at Parker Mountain? Yeah, my understanding is that you can. Uh, well, you. I'm not quite sure. It might have changed where. Um, yeah, with the bankruptcy business. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think there were ranger coverage issues um, because for a while they stopped weekend camping at Stora, but um, and I, I, to be honest, I can't give you a definitive yes or no. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite possible you can rent space at Parker Mountain, but they are renting it. Parker Mountain has been under lease for many years now to an art school from New York City. And um, it's actually quite uh, um, interesting to see because they've created a number of uh, um, gigantic uh, sculptures like they're there was a pair of sneakers hanging from a steel cable uh, looking over um, Big Willie. And uh, there was, there's a large um, wooden structure that has the resemblance to some kind of um, like the chairs uh, on a Ferris wheel, but it's not a Ferris wheel. It, it just looks like they should be able to move with turning wheels and belts, but those things aren't there. It's just a series of wooden um, uh, platforms that look like they move, but there's no way to move mm -hmm. them that I'm aware of. Uh, anyway, um, uh, they've they've it, it, that school has really developed the camp and built dormitories and stuff for when their kids are there. They don't camp in tents. But um, uh, we haven't camped there, uh, 248 hasn't camped there uh, for several years. Uh, and, and I have a recollection that they weren't allowing weekend camping, but I have a feeling like that you can now. So that's like yeah. incredibly muddy and uh, indistinct. Call the council office if you want to find out. Try to go there, yeah, yeah. All right. Steve, can you flip to the next slide? Um, people, any others that you know that that you know? Those are just some names that I kind of thought of. Um, any any others? Um, Is anyone still at the Camp Richard on Nantucket? I have never been there. Uh, have you there's been? also one there's also one on Martha's Vineyard, but they they're privately managed. They're no longer I don't think either one of them are BSA managed. And the last time I tried to secure a space, which was a long time ago on Martha's Vineyard, um they didn't 
to let's just say communication was uh problematic and um but i think that you can still go to nantucket it's just difficult to make arrangements it's because it's not bsa managed anymore as far yeah. as yeah i mean we don't i've only gone to the website after after a parent had, uh, had mentioned it and i mean it is only for basically um Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, and Scouts BSA. So at least there's there's that. So yeah, that's, yeah you're right. This private managed. BSA managed and owned anymore. That's when right. there was some sort of um, conflict with um, the Cape and Islands Council, as I recall. Well, the the other problem with the the vineyard thing is that they are very wary of fires because the vineyard has an underground root system that is susceptible to uh, uh, kind of embers going beneath the ground and then burning up all of the root system underneath the topsoil. Well, so good they're very Scott. worried about that on, on the vineyard. They all, at least they were, you know, decades ago when we camped there. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that, that's a serious problem of any open fire in the woods. Um, of, of catching, you know, catching yeah, boots on sure. fire underground. Yeah. Sure. I'll tell you, we, we there's Camp Resolute out in Bolton um, that uh, 248 goes to every year to do our Dutch oven cooking trip in November. And on occasion, we'll make a second trip uh, there. Um, of course, there's um, there's Knobscot in Sudbury, right. which is a wonderful place. Um and uh, one, of the things, distance. Uh, one of the great things about um uh uh Nobscot is that they they're used by an orienteering group um and there's orienteering courses that are pre laid out there it, so if you can if you can find them it's uh it's a great place to do uh like the first class orienteering requirement. Uh, mm -hmm. because they have a one mile course that's laid out basically follows the trails but the markers are just off the trail so um the scouts um can do a little bushwhacking unless they're clever enough to just figure out where they need to end up once they find the heading and use the trail map to find their way there which is legal um but uh um it, every April, 248 likes to take uh, what we call a sightseeing trip where um, we'll go, uh, the scouts are told, we'll, anywhere we can drive to in a day, and we go during school vacation in April, and typically it's like a three or a four night event, two driving days and two or three days for activities. We've gone, the first trip was to the Hall of Fame, uh, Major League Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Um, there's a Boy Scout camp um, that uh, I can't remember the name of at the moment. Um, and they have, uh, you can earn pa a patch by doing a quiz um, at uh, at the Hall of Fame. Um, and there's, um, we've gone to, Gettysburg twice and there's a Boy Scout camp about a half an hour away from Gettysburg I think it's called Tuckahoe and um, um, with the New Birth of Freedom Council and they you can get patches for Gettysburg hiking the trails and doing other things there with rockers and so forth um, we've been to Niagara Falls in New York and there's a Boy Scout camp about a half an hour to an hour away from there We've gone to Washington, D.C. twice, and there's a Boy Scout camp about an hour due west of downtown D.C. Uh, we drive uh, to the metro, get on the metro and go into D.C., do the mall and the monuments and so forth. Um, so, it you know, it gives me the idea that just about anywhere you want to go in this country, there's probably a Boy Scout camp within an hour's drive. Um, and so... Uh, it, it's pretty nifty. We th this year we didn't really go anywhere. They they went well. That's not true. They went to um, the Mystic and and other places, but um, they stayed at a public campground. Um, 
Uh, but um, they were looking at New York City. You know, there's a Boy Scout. There's more than one Boy Scout camp. I think there's one on Staten Island. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one, I think, in New Jersey uh, called Ten Mile River that um, I don't know if it's still operational. Um, but so those are great options, you know, for getting away from it all and seeing some history. Um, and I'll give you a little hint. The, um, the, the, camps, the campsite outside of Washington, D.C. has um, great showers. <laughs> well, we used Always to stay at Fort Belvoir. At Fort Belvoir, if you wanted to go down to, to DC too. Sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to hear what you said. Where? Fort Belvoir. They'll let you stay at Fel Fort Belvoir if you want to bring the scouts down to DC. Oh, well, that name doesn't sound familiar. Um, well, it, it's one of the it? army bases outside of Washington, DC. Oh. It's Fort Myers and, and Fort Belvoir. I think it's Myers. Yeah. B-E-L-V-O-I-R. Steve. Yeah. I believe you're talking Camp Henderson. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, by Cooperstown? Yeah. By Cooperstown. Henderson? Henderson. Hmm. It, that sounds it familiar. did a name change about uh, 20 years ago. Okay. I believe you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Steve, what is the next slide? Is that the the Cub, Cub Scout business? Yes. Joe, take yes. it away. Hey, uh, so nobody here is a cubber, but for the value of the people on the internet, hi, hello, YouTube. Um, so the National Summertime Pack Award is an award that is available to packs, to dens, and to scouts. So generally speaking, your uh, what the national asks of you to earn the National Summertime Award is to do three things in the summer. One thing in June, one thing in July, one thing in August outside. What counts as outside? They don't care. Uh, if that's a picnic at a ball field, if that's going down to Revere Beach, if that's going to any of the wonderful camps Ron was just talking about, all of that counts. As long as you are outside and it is June, it counts as June's outdoor activity. Same for July and August, still going to be outside. It just has to be in one of those months um, so that essentially we don't want the pack to shut down all summer long. We want there to still be activities to do. Um the uh, pack can get a nice certificate and a ribbon for their flag uh, if they participate. Uh, the dens, uh, each of them can also, there's a, if uh, half of the members, I think it is, uh, participate in all of the events. Or let me say, at least one event each month. Uh, so if your pack is super busy uh, and they have two June events, uh, if uh, half the members of a den go to, you know, one of the June events, the July event, and the August event, that counts too. Um, even if, you know, say you don't get 50% at any one. Uh, and if the scout uh, themselves, the cub does, there is a, a pin that they can earn. Uh, and there's a different one for a tiger, for a, um, a wolf or bear, and a weeblos. I think wolf and bear, they all have an individual one, which is super cool. Uh, there isn't one for lions because ideally there would be lions. Uh, there, there aren't any sort of lions for the summer. Uh, they, they start joining come, um, you know, the fall. Uh, and there's none for uh, Arrow of Light because, well, they're, they're with the scout troop uh, at that point. So, um, I believe that's the only slide you gave me, Ron. Um, but <laughs> if uh, anyone has any questions on the uh, National Summertime Pack Award, uh, John, you had something? Not a question, but an, an offer. I run my uh, Lionel trains uh, modular layout, 12 foot by 24 foot in my backyard every August for the first full week of August. This year, the dates will be Friday the 4th through Monday the 14th. So it completely covers that full week, first full week in August and the two weekends in between on either end. Uh, so Friday. a pack could do just like a, a day trip out to see the trains at John Bowles house. That's right. I've offered it at that. I have flyers that I send out for that specialized, uh, especially addressing that for packs. 
and, and how do the uh, people on YouTube get a hold of you? Uh, well, my oh, how do they get a hold of me to start with? Um, that's a good issue. I have uh, I have a mailing list of all the e all the emails for leaders of the PACs in our district. Um, and I have even some people on my distribution list that are outside of our district. Um, so that's what I use to get it started. I have flyers that I email, and I also have different ones with a different picture um, that I do physically hand out. But I right, so John, what is your email address if I, as a Cub Master yeah. watching on YouTube, want to reach out to you? Sure. It's my name, John, with a middle initial C, bowl, all one word, no punctuation or anything. Uh, at gmail.com and, those and we can remember my... it's john siebel because you're the commissioner no it's because it's my middle initial <laughs> sure it could be two things See, remember it any way you want oh, wonderful call me anything but late for supper um so uh so with that i will make sure to check the uh youtube comments if anyone has any questions about the summertime pack award for the next month or so uh and once this gets posted up but besides that, I'll hand that back to Ron for his closing remarks. Okay. Uh, Steve, you want to go forward again? One more slide. This is something that hmm. is kind of under the radar. Um, there is a thing called the National Honor Patrol Award that your scouts can earn. There is the link to the application form. Um, basically, if the, if the patrol is doing a good job, um, they can earn this award. Um, and it's a, it's, the reason I put, put this in was because of the uh, Summertime Pack Award having an option for DEN school. To, to, this is something a patrol can do to get a distinction, a distinction for their doing a good job, uh, have a good patrol spirit. Uh, you know, it starts off with the simple stuff like they should know have a patrol yell, patrol motto. Um, there should be some advancement and there should be some activities. So it's a, it's a nice idea to build your patrol structure and get more uh, participation for them as patrols, which is the, 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 the basic building block of Scouts BSA. Uh, yeah, Ron, if you just, I'll just quickly run down the um, requirements. Have a patrol name, flag, and yell uh, and put the design on patrol equipment. That's a thing they're going to do anyway. Hold two patrol meetings each month, uh, which they're definitely going to do. Take part in one hike, outdoor activity, or scouting event. Um, and remember, this is over a three-month period, and every three months you can earn another one. Um, do two service projects. Uh, help two patrol members advance one rank. Have 75 members uh, percent of members in full uniform. Uh, have a uh, representative attend your PLCs. And have eight members of the patrol uh, or experience an increase in patrol membership. Thank you, Joe. That's that's great. I mean, you know, it's something that a, a, a patrol should be fairly easy, easy to do, easy to earn, um, and something unusual, something outside of the, the normal course of events. As okay. someone who spends a lot of time looking at other people's uniforms, I can tell you, I don't think I've ever seen one of these in the real world. Uh, someone with a National Honor Patrol award on their sleeve. So that'd be yeah. super cool if I were a kid to see that. It is. Um, for a while, for a while, there was a version that was called the Baden Powell Patrol Award, um, and that that they, they, the same little device, that little uh, star that you put next to the patrol emblem. Um, but you're right; it is a rare award to see. Yep. Okay. I've seen it twice. Okay, Ken, that's that's good to know. Yeah, that's good to know. I, I can count one one, one patrol having done it uh, in a long time. Is it is it hard to earn, or nobody just tries for it? Nobody, nobody tries. tries. It's it's under the radar. That's the problem. It's not something that anybody promotes. Hence the commercial tonight. <laughs> okay, uh, Steve, can we go forward. Then I'll get to I think the fun stuff. <laughs> there we go whoops <laughs> it's out of order oh well <laughs> oh i can't identify them i know this one i know this one <laughs> how do you do this with your troop i mean i have had uh some of the most in the it, with with cell phones um have gotten all sorts of 
unusual things presented trying to satisfy this requirement. Um, uh, I, I, the, the second class requirement is to identify 10 animals, plants, uh, I'm sorry, animals, birds, reptiles, amphibians uh, that are in your area. So that was pretty straightforward. And then the first class version is to do that for plants. Um, and so I've had scouts present me with a cell phone picture of some grass um, <laughs> saying it. Can really? confirm that's a plant. Well, plant. Does, do the eight members of the Raven Patrol count as, as eight different animals? Of course. <laughs> species. They're not the same. They're, they're the same species. Same species. Okay, so Steve get Steve get got it. The technical good. The, it, it also says you have to remind the scouts. It says wild animals. You can't count cats, dogs, or other pets. What about feral cats? Uh, feral cats she, wild. Feral mm. cats definitely count. I'll I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. That's what the cat said. Prove it. Prove it was a feral cat. So I'll tell you something, Ron. Back in my day, when I was a scout, Boys Life published a um, a, a, a quiz for both uh, plants uh, and animals. And they mostly used footprints for the mm -hmm. animals. And uh, you had to, you know, you could write in the answer. So we would photocopy it and then give it to the scouts and they could write in the answer. And then there was a key that you could correct them. And so it was not uncommon for kids to pass this, these requirements using those um, tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't actually done it, but I've prepared myself by taking photographs of leaves and bushes that I can identify while I was at Winoxit last summer so that I can show them to the scouts, teach them what they are, and then have them uh, find samples of it, right? Or you show them a photo and you get and, you know, let them play a guessing game until they get it right. They yeah. don't necessarily, I mean, I, I don't know what the, I don't think there's anywhere in the in the letter of the requirement that says um they actually have to go out and retrieve you know i think a photograph or identifying a photograph that somebody else took is satisfactory isn't it yeah well you know doing doing um in again because of cell phones it's really easy for them to document that also for birds bird study merit badge you know take pictures um and it's pretty amazing what good picture you can take with a cell phone um, so these were all, all Massachusetts guys you could find. Um, the uh, Joe, the cottontail rabbit was in Revere. Okay. Um, so let's go down the, the next one. Get you, you guys did great. You got 100% on this. Um, <laughs> You want to flip down the next, the next slide probably is the one that should come first without the names. Ron, these are the two slides, this one and this one. Uh-oh. Nope. Oh, oh, there was There's something another. different. There, you there go. we go. The extra credit part of the test. Uh, well, that one in the top right is a bird. <laughs> so it's the one on the bottom left. Ooh, that's right. Uh, so we're oh, good with that. Birds. It's an orange <laughs> bill a tuxedo tail, bird. Cottontail moth? A cottontail butterfly? Yes, it's swallowtail. It's a blue swallowtail. Yes. Swallowtail. Are those pipers? No, those are two Bonaparte skulls. Um, they are very interesting birds because whoops, <laughs> because they disappeared. Sorry, I touched something. I just... Yep, there they go. Those, those guys actually go up to northern Maine and they nest in spruce trees, which is kind of a you know not where you'd expect to find a seagull. Um, and the other guy 
is a it's called it a, it's an American oyster catcher, uh, mm. which is really distinctive looking shorebird. Um, they breed in Winthrop. Um, they mm. today just found out today that the one one of them who's been coming here I think for at least ten years has a has a clutch of babies uh, down on the rocks. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You took that picture, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good picture. Yeah, that one came out nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that the next slide is, you know, oh yeah, that was how this was supposed to work. I hadn't figured out how to do that except for yeah, slides. So really, people, we would appreciate uh, suggestions. There's a tentative schedule uh, for the year that's available. It'll be the last slide, but we can always add things. Uh, it's meant to be an interactive discussion. Um, and Joe is going to be presenting a Cub Scout session each month. And hopefully, uh, we can get this. If we have, when we have the attendance, we'll be setting up a... Uh, uh, of two rooms, one for each section, the Scouts BSA breakout and the Cub Scout breakout. Next slide. Bring your has... friends. Sorry, Bring your John? friends' friends. Bring all your friends. Bring your friends' friends. Maybe it'll right. catch on. Steve, just so you know, in January, we will, we will have those uh, footprints to look at from animals, <laughs> the tracking section. Um, Mass Wildlife produces a little card. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, <laughs> I will have the contact information for that. Yeah. Uh, so that's a run. Those are the topics, and you know, hopefully, encourage people to come. Um, I think we have better sessions with them, like tonight, with a lot of discussion and participation um, as we discuss uh, discuss the topics and share what we know and learned as scout leaders. Okay, Steve, that's all I have got. I like to camp in the woods. John, anything advancement that we should be aware of? Any changes? Or yeah, the numbers are down. I'm not seeing a lot of eagles. Projects are down. Uh, boards of review are down. Uh, mm -hmm. So I mean we're like we're not we're like a third of where we were last year at this time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you have any sense that they, you know it, it's it's obviously that's a massive decline, but is it is do things level off over the summer because well usually when school ends I start seeing an increase, but I haven't seen the increase. I mean okay. it's just uh, it's just not happening and. Maybe at the end of the summer, usually now and at the end of the summer is when it all comes together. Mm -hmm. but I haven't seen anything. I mean, we, we had like, I don't know, almost 40 scouts last year. And we're, I think we're just over eight boards of review this year. Interesting. Now, Ben, you've had a couple of kids come up this, this year, right? Yes. Yeah. Right, right. We have one who's going to be sending in his project proposal uh, imminently. I tell them not to bother. We'll just flunk them right out, right? <laughs> Have the board of review first before approving his topics. Yeah, absolutely. And fail them there. <laughs> tell them to come back later. No, we like we send it in. We love all projects. I was kidding about failing them now. I know, I know, I know, I know. We're we're putting we're putting the project in papers within the truth before we send it on. Well, we don't like to say no, but sometimes we have to. No, well, this one—I think this was pretty good. So, no, well, it's good. Better than the last few I've seen, I hope. Okay. So well, that's about all I've got. I mean, yeah. Okay. Just that the numbers are down. If you guys got kids ready, you can push them. I mean, yeah. We have a a bottle. We're not a bottleneck, but we have a. There aren't that many kids that are like at life are at life scout yet. Well, we did have two instances where 
kids turned in their their uh, applications and they aged out and they were missing a required merit badge. So make sure your kids get all their merit badges done before they age out. Right, right. Okay. Well, I think that that's about it, gentlemen. Um, appreciate it. You know, and go out and get your ice cream now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one one request or yep. inquiry, maybe. Um, I'm trying to scare up uh, enthusiasm for a chuck wagon derby. Oh, and that'd be cool. I, I, I ran across in my old files um, an agenda, well, actually a, a flyer. Not, that wasn't a flyer. It's what you would hand out to the leaders when they come to an event. Um, description of chuck wagon derby from the Northern Light District, uh, which used to be part of the... Uh, the council that has merged with us from the north and the uh, it looks like they used boy scouts and i remember doing this uh the first time i did a chuck wagon derby um it was equivalent to a klondike derby and that there were individual activity sites and the boy scouts ran them or at least one scout at each one uh, i was at one site with one boy scout um, and the Cub Scouts would keep coming by with their wagons and doing the event, which was basically cornhole um, with uh, aluminum pie plates instead of a board with holes in, um, throwing rocks instead of sacks or whatever. Um, but the, the concept of having the Boy Scouts participate in a Cub Scout activity, uh, providing some contact between troops and packs and having the Boy Scouts setting a good example um, for the Cub Scouts of how to be creative and how to basically run a activity station. Um, I thought that might be an approach we should take instead of just having the Cub Scout packs run a station like we used to do at the um, Cub Olympics that we had several decades ago now um, up at the uh, Shriners Auditorium on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, that that one was set up that the packs would run an, an, an activity. I remember doing a, uh, a, a short uh, putting uh, activity, which was more fun if you laid down on the fake grass and used the, the pool, the uh, putter as a pool cue, and uh, it was easier to get the ball into the hole that way. But if any Boy Scout troops would be interested. Oh, I can't call them Boy Scout troops. Any troops, Scouts, BSA troops would be uh, willing to consider participating in that. Um, at least think about it for now. The activity would not happen until fall. Um, I'm shooting for late September, early October as a kickoff activity for PACs with new people. Uh, as well as just an act, a first activity for the existing Cub Scouts that survived through the summer. Uh, and anticipating that the packs would use, packs and dens, uh, the dens of the packs would use the summer to build their chuck wagon, whether it's shaped like a flyer wagon, red wagon with, you know, rubber tired wheels, and then something stuck on top of it like a, like a Conestoga wagon or actually try to build something like I've seen down at uh, Camp Greeno uh, when the uh, Cape Cod uh, Council ran a chuck wagon derby of their own. Uh, they had some fantastic wagons that the, of course, the adults built, not the Cub Scouts, but uh, there were some really cool looking pieces. Uh, one looked like a, perfectly looked like a casket, uh, nice handles on the outside and everything, but everything went into it, the wheels, everything, the drawbars, these are pulled by Cub Scouts, not by horses uh, or mules, so or Boy Scouts. But I suppose the Boy Scouts consider the Weeblos to be good fodder for uh, pulling their uh, wagons if they were doing it. But uh, that is an activity we have not had for a long time and would like to get it up and running. Um, you know, depending on how many troops you have involved, you could have a troop per station. Each troop can run a station. Well, we have... I think 13 troop, 13 packs in our district. And if they sent more than one den, 
because the idea is that one den pulls one wagon and they work together as a den to do the, each activity plus pulling the wagon around. Um, that we could use a lot of stations. It depends on what's, what venue we, cho we choose or what we use. Um, I was thinking of uh, Pine Banks, uh, the, the border of uh, Malden and Melrose. Um, yeah, you can't get lost in there. That, that, that's a good place. Yeah. Of course, that's a public uh, playground as well as... Uh, yeah, but this is cow friendly. Uh, and it can be very busy, uh, but hopefully we can get a, a decent day. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a short road and then a real long one around the back. It goes over to the baseball fields from the uh, the park. I think I think that's uh, so. I think that's a, I think that's George Burgess's brother running the place, right? What was that, John? I think George Burgess's brother runs the place. Yes, yeah, I believe so. The the uh, not warden, but uh, ranger. So. Yeah, uh, PAC 609 does a lot of activities there. And I, I don't know, I don't think Troop 603 has been doing much there, but it's convenient. Uh, I don't know whether Melrose units either. Ken, do you know, the, do you, Ken, Ken Fung, do you know if the uh, the pa units, PACs, or troops use uh, use that facility, Pine Banks? Usually uh, the PAC uses it at least twice a year. Um, the troop uses it like once a year, mm -hmm. um, mostly when they do uh, crossovers or uh, uh, joint camping trips. Something nice and close. Very. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we, 609 has, has a long history of, of using that, that facility. So I, I think I can get us a good space and good date. Uh, they don't really take reservations so much as just let people come in because uh, it is a public space. But um, there is a playground, there is a shelter, a um, couple of them. Um, but there's the huge baseball fields and soccer fields on the north side. So we would not be using that except skirting around the edge of it to uh, stay on the tr existing trails. So, but looking forward to doing that activity, uh, whether it's a joint effort between scouts and Cub Scouts or not. Uh, we'd like to just get it going, even if there's only one wagon from each from each pack. I would like to have every pack um, participate. So that's the goal. Just wanted to share. That's good. Okay. okay, so I guess I think we're we can we're done. Um, appreciate everybody coming tonight. Yeah. And who's choosing which flavor of ice cream that they're making their own Sunday? Pistachio. S U N D A E. We did a uh, cake and ice cream yesterday, so uh, uh, I'm not going to make the kids <laughs> go have ice cream again. Okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to have a bowl of uh, pistachio almond. So there's always chocolate in my refrigerator in my freezer anyway. So. That's the extra. I wish we could. I could share it. I always enjoy that activity at our in-person roundtables. Maybe next year at this time we will have all of us together and uh, having Sundays to build your own Sunday with ice cream to build your own Sunday with. So, but no, no, uh, no shaving cream or uh, no whipped cream. Be nice and clean. Which kind, Ken? Be nice and clean. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I have to that... understand that if you shave every day, you will always look keen. <laughs> I never had that luck. <laughs> five o'clock. Right, I shaved as fast as my beard grows. At, at one o'clock already, I had five o'clock shadow and it wasn't white. So. All right, friends. Unfortunately, I have another meeting that I was double booked for. So I'm going to try to jump on the end of that one. Okay. Uh, bye. Next okay. you guys, guys, we will not have any of these uh, for another two months, right? Unless we right. try to squeeze September something in August. Is the next one. It's on the uh, last slide. Yeah. The September date uh, topic. Yeah. Yeah. But we might have to try to pull something together in August. So just for planning purposes, but that's what the district committee is for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, have take a good care. summer, everyone. Right. Take care. Good night. Have a good Thank summer. Thank you, Ron, for all your work.
keep the photographs coming. Yeah. Okay. Have a good night, everybody.